I was in communication with someone from the U.S. Marines recently who told me that he swore an oath and he also told me that he was a Christian and I asked him what oath should we swear considering this verse but above all things my brethren swear not neither by heaven neither by the earth neither by any other oath but let your yea be yea and your nay nay lest ye fall into condemnation so with that in mind let's take a closer look at their oath against God upon enlisting in the United States Armed Forces each person enlisting in an armed force whether a soldier sailor Coast Guardsman airman or marine takes an oath of enlistment enlistment oath in it they swear or affirm that they will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic So help me God at the end see the word so help me God may be omitted for persons who desire to affirm rather than to swear the oath so basically what that's saying is the people who believe in God that that go against him and swear the oath will say so help me God and the straight up heathen just rather affirm so how do they support and defend their constitution so let's take a look at their first amendment that they supposedly support and defend the First Amendment to the United States Constitution prohibits the making of any law respecting an establishment of religion, impeding the free exercise of religion. The Establishment Clause is the first of several pronouncements in the First Amendment to the United States Constitution stating, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. The Establishment Clause has generally been interpreted to prohibit, one, the establishment of a national religion by Congress, or, two, the preference by the U.S. government of one religion over another. The first approach is called the separation or no-aid interpretation, while the second approach is called the non-preferential or accommodation interpretation. The accommodation interpretation prohibits Congress from preferring one religion over another, but does not prohibit the government's entry into religious domain to make accommodations in order to achieve the purposes of the free exercise clause. So, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, but somehow U.S. government, regardless, has allowed special non-profit status to certain conformist hypocrites in respect of establishment of religion. And what's this again? The Establishment Clause has generally been interpreted to prohibit the preference by the U.S. government of one religion over another. But regardless, their military employees are required to bind themselves by their oath in preference to what's written in James 5.12. So since some people can't have their religion and their adopted government too, let's consider some verses. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And this from Enoch chapter 6 goes right along with what I just read in Genesis chapter 6. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Samjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear ye will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty 
of a great sin. And they all answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were in all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. Now back to Genesis chapter 6 as I pick up where I left off there. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from off the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now considering that the summit of Mount Hermon is where they swore an oath, according to Enoch, I care to mention that Hermon is Mount Sion, per Deuteronomy 4.48. And someone wrote, Praise waiteth for thee, O God, in Sion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed. So two hundred fallen ones bound themselves by an oath to take wives. And this vow in Psalms reminds me of their marriage vow. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. As it is written in Revelation chapter 20. Now let's compare what somebody wrote here to what was written in Hebrews about it. The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Yes, indeed, he rejected the commandment. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne, he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. But on the contrary, David said in First Chronicles chapter 28, Of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. God to Nathan the prophet, Go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, 
even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. And is since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies, also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Not Solomon's. So if God set up the seed after David slept with his fathers, how did he announce that Solomon would build the house and his kingdom established forever? If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Because David tried slipping Solomon in as a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And he said unto them, How say they that Christ is David's son? And David himself saith in the book of Psalms, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore calleth him Lord. How is he then his son? Then in the audience of all the people he said unto his disciples, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes, and love greetings in the markets, and the highest seats in the synagogues, and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a shoe make long prayers. The same shall receive greater damnation.